Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to practice solving for a specific variable when there's multiple variables in an equation or formula. And uh, what we're going to be doing here is solving for x. So you can see the equation here. We have the variables uh, x, m, and c. Again, you want to solve for x. In other words, we're going to rearrange this whole thing such that you have x is equal to whatever. Okay, so this is going to be a somewhat challenging problem. Uh, not, I would say, uh, overly difficult, but there is a lot of steps. So if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to solve this particular uh, equation for x step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that uh, in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. So again, we're solving for x. So what is the solution? Well, this is it right here. Now, there is another kind of way you could express this, but you should have gotten something pretty close to this. I'll show you uh, as I work the problem uh, down to the end of the solution, an alternative um, uh, solution, or, or another way you could um, uh, express the solution, which is fine. But hopefully you got this. And if you did get this, this is very, very impressive. Matter of fact, let me give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 110% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family you know exactly how to solve for a specific variable when there's multiple variables going on. They'll be like, wow, you are a math genius. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into this as there are multiple steps. Now, uh, some people might be saying, well, why do I have to learn this? You know, why, you know, why are you making me go through this torture? Well, in algebra and in science, you need to know how to rearrange formulas uh, in terms of a specific variable. This is a very key uh, algebra skill. So, uh, you know, this particular problem is a little bit more maybe challenging than, uh, than usual, but um, nevertheless, it's uh, nothing that you shouldn't be able to uh, not handle, especially if you're like at the algebra one or algebra two level. So if you need help with algebra beyond this, uh, check out like my Algebra 2 course. Uh, that's probably the course I would suggest um, in my math help program. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Anything you don't understand, just make a mental note. And uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, off to the races here. Okay, so here is our equation. So we kind of have to need uh, like a strategy here, right? So if, what we want to kind of notice is that really we have a big numerator up here. And this is a denominator. And then we have this variable all by itself. But the key observation I want you to look at is like this is a fraction. Okay, so here we have a uh, numerator and denominator. And anytime you see a fraction bar in algebra, you want to always kind of be thinking uh, proportions. Okay, so let me go ahead and just erase this here real quick so we can uh, uh, see what I'm talking about. So here, I'm like, okay, here's a fraction bar, here's an equal sign, and if you can get two equal fractions, well, this is really exciting stuff. So for example, let's uh, look at the fraction one half, and let's think of another fraction that's equal to one half, maybe like four over eight. What you have right here is a proportion, okay? So in other words, a proportion is one fraction equaling to another fraction, and the cross product is always true when it comes to a proportion. In other words, one times eight is equal to two times four. Okay, one times eight is eight. Two times four, of course, is eight. So anytime we can kind of visualize something as one fraction equal to another fraction, we can simply use the cross product uh, uh, and to kind of clear those fractions and kind of go from there. And that is the strategy that I'm going to use here. I'm like, oh, I got a fraction here. But some of you might say, we don't have a fraction over here. Well, this is easy. We can make this into a fraction. You can make uh, any number or any variable into a fraction or think of it as a fraction, just putting it over one and voila, we have a fraction. Okay, so here is my two fractions. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking um, uh, proportion, but there is another thing that you need to be mindful of. 
here I have a difference. Here I have a sum. I'm adding two things here. I'm subtracting the two things here. Now, what a lot of um, algebra textbooks don't stress enough is uh, putting in parentheses. So you notice over here, I don't have parentheses around my sums or differences. You have to kind of put those in. Never be shy about putting in um, grouping symbols, parentheses, because that's really going to help you avoid making a common error. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I got C. I'm going to put that at C over 1, so I can think of this as a fraction, equal to another fraction. And I'm going to put grouping symbols around my sum and differences. And now I'm like, oh, OK, now I can go ahead and use the cross product here, right? So 1 times this is equal to C times this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. OK, so here, C times this denominator is equal to, well, actually, I kind of um, have this on the reverse side, but that's OK. Um, you can put this on the left or the right. doesn't make a difference. So C times this is equal to this right here. Or you can think of it, this denominator times C is equal to that. And then 1 times this is 1 times that numerator. OK, so you can kind of see what's going on here. And this is the result of the cross product because, again, this is a proportion. All right, so, you know, again, we need a strategy. Now, there is maybe a couple different approaches you could take to simplify this. So if you want on another path, that's perfectly fine as long as you, um, you know, got the correct answer. All right, so now what do we do from here? Well, we're, we're going to have to start simplifying. And right here, we have 1 outside of this parentheses. So we want to be uh, thinking about the distributive property. Well, 1 times this is not going to change this, but this C... I'm going to have to distribute into these two terms. Now, if I didn't have these parentheses right here, okay, let's just suppose I just had this, a lot of students would just multiply this C by this first term. Okay, it's not obvious I got to multiply this C by this second term. So that's why you really, really want to uh, put in those grouping symbols. Now, everything I tell you, okay, first of all, if you follow me, uh, well, if you're with me uh, so far in this video, thank you very much. But if you follow me on my YouTube channel, uh, you know, I try to bring you valuable information. Okay? I'm not just trying to show you, hey, look at me, I'm doing a math problem. That's not the idea. What I'm trying to impart is decades of teaching mathematics and studying mathematics and showing you all the little, like, little tips and tricks to help you reduce making errors. Okay? A huge part of mathematics is not making a mistake, right? We all make errors. I still make errors to this day, but the name of the game is to focus and reduce making errors. So again, you know, if you really want to be uh, successful as possible in this level of mathematics, you know, uh, if I tell you, hey, put this in, you know, follow my advice, it will pay off. Okay, so let's go to continue on here. So again, I'm like, all right, well, I got to take this one and multiply, uh, use the distributive property into these terms. Nothing's going to change, so we'll just drop these grouping symbols. And then this C, okay, I'm going to uh, use the distributive property, so I'm going to end up with C times X to the one-third. That's equal to this. And then C times M to the one-third is C to the M to the one-third. Okay, so finally, finally, um, I have all my terms. I distributed this C. So what should I do now? Well, Remember, what variable am I solving for? Well, I'm trying to solve for x. So you need to really kind of focus in on the x's. So here we have an x right here, and here we have an x right there, right? So what, what are we going to have to do? Well, we're going to have to get all the x's over here. Okay, if we're trying to solve for x, we're going to have to get all the x stuff all those terms on the left-hand side of the equation, and then we're going to have to put everything else over here, okay? So uh, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to move those x's over here, and then everything else, um, like this uh, negative m to the one-third, is going to have to go on the other side, right? So again, don't let all these little variable uh, you know, terms confuse you. You have to stand back and kind of see the big picture. All right, so let's go and start doing that right now. So first things first, let's go ahead and move this x uh, term over to the left-hand side. So I have c x to the one-third, so I'm going to subtract c x to the one-third from both sides of the equation. Now, uh, you, it goes without saying that you should already know how to solve 
you know, uh, linear equations and be really, really good at this stuff. If you are thoroughly confused, okay, which some of you may be, well, for, you know, it's not the end of the world. What you need to do is just say, okay, I'm going to have to improve with this. So I'm going to strongly suggest you, um, again, go to my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, probably out more like Algebra 2 for this uh, level of problem, and uh, review uh, solving linear equations, okay, and how to solve uh, for specific variables. Start with the easy problems and build your way uh, up. But anyways, let's proceed. So I'm subtracting this CX to the one-third from both sides of the equation. I'm doing this to get all the X's together. All right, so the result of that, remember, I'm just going to kind of add down in a column manner. I get X to the one-third minus CX to the one-third. So we'll kind of express that in here in this group. And then we have minus uh, M to the one-third. And then this goes away because we're subtracting this one from one another, and we're just left with C uh, M to the one third. Okay, so now what? Well, again, we want all of our X's over here, and we've already done that, but now we gotta get rid of this um, M uh, term, and let's move it over there. So we're going to add M to the one third to both sides of the equation. You can see that work right there. And the result of doing that will be uh, C, m to the one-third plus m to the one-third. So you can see that written right there. And here's what we ended up on the left-hand side, x to the one-third minus cx to the one-third. So some of you might be saying, wow, this is a lot of work. Well, yes, you know, there is a lot of steps. Hopefully you don't find any of them overly difficult. But again, you know, this is not a problem that you would, you know, kind of like start learning this, jump into a problem like this, start with more basic stuff and work your way up. All right, so what are we going to do now? Well, again, I'm thinking, well, I, how am I going to get x by itself? I have uh, x to the one-third minus cx to the one-third. Well, what you want to be thinking here is you can factor out an x to the one-third. Okay, so anytime you're kind of stuck with a problem, you're not sure what to do, always look for opportunities to factor. Okay, and I'm like, well, if I factor out an x to the one-third, hopefully you can see that these are common, right, amongst these uh, terms. I have x to one-third, x to one-third here, uh, here, so this is the greatest common factor. I can factor out x to the one-third because, look, if I multiply back in, I'm going to get this right here, right, x to the one-third minus c, x to the one-third. So let's factor it out. And the lovely thing um, by doing that is now I have one x term all by itself, right? Now, because I factored out this x to the one-third, I'm thinking, well, maybe I can factor out uh, over here this m to the one-third, and you certainly can. Okay, so I'm factoring out that m to the worth, uh, m to the one-third right there, and you can see that's, um, you know, anytime you're not sure that you factored, it's the greatest common factor, but anytime you're not sure if you factor correctly, just multiply back in and see if you get uh, this product, okay? All right, so... Again, if you are confused, just, you know, pause the video, think about what I'm saying, rewind it. That's the beauty of video. All right, so now what am I going to do? Well, I got everything factored out. Well, the objective is to solve for x. Well, here I have 1 minus c, uh, this kind of coefficient from this x to the one-third term. So let's go ahead and divide both sides of the uh, equation here by 1 minus c, okay? Because when I do this, 1 minus c... Uh, divided by 1 minus c is 1, or 1x uh, to the 1 third, i.e. just x to the 1 third. So we're getting really close to getting that x by itself. So uh, dividing both sides of the equation by 1 minus c is what I'm showing you right here. Okay, so now we're down to this. So x to the 1 third is equal to c plus 1 m, uh, times m to the 1 third over 1 minus c. That's the result of dividing uh, 1 minus c by both sides of the equation. Okay, so we're almost there. Remember, you want to solve for, oops, I didn't want to use that. I want to use my little pin here. Uh, you want to solve for x, right? So I got x to the one-third. I want to solve for x. How can I resolve this scenario? Well, what we need to do is raise both sides of the equation to the third power. See, three times one-third, again, um, you know, we are doing some, you know, pretty involved algebra here. So you need to really know a lot about uh, solving linear equations and powers and exponents. But 
uh, if we have an outside exponent uh, to an inside exponent, or uh, out, out, we're taking a power to a power, you just multiply that outside exponent to the inside ex exponent. So here I have x to the one third. I'm raising it to the third power because three times uh, one third is x to the first, okay, is what I want. I want to solve for x. But if I'm going to raise the left-hand side by the third power, I also have to raise the right-hand side by the third power. Okay, so when I do this, the result is what? Well, x to the one-third uh, to the third uh, power, of course, is just x to the first or x. So we're finally done. But what we need to do is clean up this side of this expression right here. Okay, so I have this outside power and I'm multiplying this outside exponent to this inside exponent. So three times m to the one third is going to be m to the first or m. Okay, so this three gets distributed to this base or this power as well. So this is c plus one to the third power. And it also gets distributed to this right here, this one minus c to the first. So this is also going to be uh, 1 minus c uh, cubed, okay? So this uh, other um, form of a correct answer would be something like this. You could have the m over here, uh, something along these lines. But if you got this expression, well, you also deserve a nice little happy face and a plus as well. But here we have a cube uh, power and a cube power, so we could get a little bit extra fancy, as I indicated with the solution. And I could just kind of put this whole expression, well, 1 plus c over 1 minus c, all that to the third power. I'm just basically factoring out the exponent. And then I have my m over right here. So you could just write it in this form if you like as well. Now, the reason why I'm kind of showing you this is because sometimes when you are taking uh, an exam, all right, and it's, let's say it's multiple choice, and there's like, you know, different options, a, b, c, d, and let's suppose you got this, right? Let's say this was a question and you got this. You're like, well, I don't see my answer. Well, what you're going to have to do is look for other ways you could kind of express your answer. You know, although it's correct, you can, you may have to kind of write it in a little bit different way. Okay. So you can kind of identify it. So, you know, again, this is just, you know, the nature of mathematics, the nature of algebra and advanced algebra. So you can see the amount of work here that uh, you know I wrote out. And of course, I pre-write all my work here just to make sure that I uh, kind of you know reduce any error possible. If I did this problem in real time, you know I'm pretty confident that I would be able to get it uh, correct. You know, of course, you know uh, anyone can make uh, an error, but you just see the amount of work here. So what's the name of the game in mathematics? Well, the obvious name of the game is focus, all right? Focus is key to anything that you want to be good in, all right? If you can't focus, if you're uh, being distracted, if you're trying to look at your cell phone, your text messages, and, or talk to someone, have a conversation, watch TV, and do math, it's not going to work. you gotta, you got to be in a total state of focus, and you got to double-check each one of your steps. So I think the hard part about math is the, uh, you know, kind of keeping your concentration. So, you know, when you do math, try to, you know, find a place that's quiet so you can work step by step. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.